Hey everyone and welcome back. Today we are going to be turning this vintage bed into a bench. Now this bed was beautiful but it had a lot of damage and not just to the finish but it had holes, cracks, and previously filled in spots. Our original intent was to paint the pieces white with a stained seat similar to one we did in the past. I start by giving it a good cleaning with TSP. I measure out for my cut on the footboard, which will be the armrests. I remove the top trim piece to get a nice clean cut. Next, I patch some of the damage and holes before scuff sanding the entire piece. thinking twice and I knew we would catch up and that we would be the ones left behind the stories I've been told they never seem to leave my mind mm, this road that I am on I gotta stay here for some time Somehow made it through without losing sight mm -hmm. And I still wonder where you are And if you found a way out from the dark The story 
stories I've been told They never seem to leave my mind mm, On this road that I am on I gotta stay here for some time Now I'm just taking a damp rag and wiping off any residual dust. And one thing I forgot to take into account was the actual bench depth. Uh, as you can see, the arm piece is 29 inches because I cut it down the middle. Uh, average bench depth is usually around 20 inches, so I had to cut them down to size. Next, I measure out the distance on the thicker panel board so that I can attach the arm pieces from the back of the headboard. I use some clamps to hold it exactly where I need it before putting the screws through. So for the frame, I'm using a 2x4 for the rear piece and a 2x6 for the front. I take multiple measurements to make sure I get the correct length so that the piece stays nice and squared up. So as you can see, I started losing daylight, but I had to get those pieces attached to help support the arms or else they could bend and rip the screws out while we were moving it. I measured out for my height and used some clamps as a second set of hands.
then I move on to the rear piece. And as you can see, I'm using pocket holes for everything because I want as many screws concealed as possible to give it a nice clean look. I install a few additional pieces for support and just to give something to attach the seat to. I'm removing the old caster sleeve so that I can put some nylon glides on. This is going to be more of a rustic piece, but I'm going to go back and fill in some of these unnatural dings and chips with Bondo. Some of these extra screw holes, things like that. Obviously, parts like this. I want these smooth. Those don't really add too much to the character, so I'm going to fill those in so they get nice and smooth with Bondo. Obviously, Things like this where this knot hole is, I'm not going to be filling in because that just adds to the character and the rustic appeal to this piece. So I will be letting spots like that go. I'm just going to fill in the other spots. Now, it is very hot out today, so I am going to have to work very fast with the Bondo because it dries quickly to begin with. And with how hot it is, it's going to dry very quickly. So I'm hoping I can get it all done with one mix and one run. So we'll see how that goes. Next, I'm using a dark walnut stain just to blend the colors a little bit better for when we distress the piece so that there isn't a large contrast in color underneath. And here's where the problem started, in a good way. 
The stain actually matched so well that we were falling in love with the look and the rustic charm it had, so we decided to do a test and stain over everything to blend the finishes together. I go in small sections and wipe off almost immediately so that I can get the perfect shade. And we loved the way it turned out with its revitalized but original charm and the character of the blended finishes and stains. I finish it all off with some wipe on poly for protection. Next, I'm using some old barn boards for the seat. Now this wood should match pretty well in color when stained and it definitely adds more character as well. I'm notching out the front and back boards to account for the leg pieces. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I Will ever figure out where the road goes Even if I'm falling down I will keep on searching for my highs Say I lost my mind, I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down And I dry fit them for good measure, and then stain Jumping from cliffs so high Trusting our wings to fly Sometimes we're crashing down But we get up and start from the ground We are finally getting some much needed rain thankfully, but it forced me to have to move my operation back inside. I applied multiple coats of poly to the seat boards for added protection, sanding very lightly in between coats.
Last, as a final touch, I'm using a Q-tip with just a little bit of stain over the screw holes just to blend everything together. And that is it. We hope you all love how this turned out as much as we do. This is another example of making decisions as you go. Uh, we started out with the intention of painting this, but decided to change things up midway and ended up with a beautiful piece that retained much of its original character. So let us know in the comments below if you would have painted it or went with the way we finished it. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights